Abracadabra. This box contains 110 extremely cool cards about the Messier Deep Sky objects. I found these completely by accident and I bought them with my own money. Cosmic Shards, the maker of this box set out of Austin, Texas, is not a sponsor. Yet. Let's go over who these cards are designed for and how much they cost. One of the purposes of this box set is to get kids excited about astronomy. But I'm here to tell you that these are also very useful for amateur astronomers like you and me, especially come springtime if you participate in the Messier Marathon. And if you have a Telrad, well, you're going to love these things. So in a way, these new stargazing cards from Cosmic Shards, they started their lives back in 1757. That year, a French astronomer named Charles Messier this guy, well, he became obsessed with comets after trying to find Halley's Comet, but from then on he became a bona fide comet hunter. That sounds like a really cool Netflix series, doesn't it? Well, he set up shop on a hotel in Paris, and he made a systematic search of the sky to find comets. Unfortunately, or fortunately for us, he kept finding things that were not comets, like uh, galaxies and star clusters and nebulae. Not another galaxy! Thankfully, Messier kept really good notes. Now, eventually, he did find 13 comets, but what made Messier a permanent part of astronomical history is that he also published a catalog of all those bothersome non-comets. That list eventually grew to 110 objects. Today, we call it the Messier catalog, and to denote each item, it simply has the letter M followed by a number. For example, M1 is the Crab Nebula, M42 is the Great Orion Nebula. Here is a montage of all of them. Now, essentially, it's a catalog of the coolest things that you could see with a telescope in a dark sky, after the Moon and Jupiter, of course. There's a common message I hear that young people aren't interested in astronomy as a hobby anymore. To be honest, even when I was young, I was basically one of the only people out of my friend group that was interested in astronomy, at least that I remember. And even that was dashed when my terrible telescope kept disappointing. It was a bad one. Step one to not wrecking this hobby is to avoid terrible telescopes. Step two is to show young folks some of the coolest things that they can see with a non-terrible telescope. And of course, one way to do that is to have colorful, uh, information-packed cards that they can relate to and then actually show them these views in a real telescope. I personally love this card set for several reasons. First, they aren't on a smartphone, so the battery will never die. Second, they are divided into seasons. They're color-coded by the seasons. Uh, that makes it super accessible. And third, they are filled with actual useful information for amateur astronomers, like really useful info. Uh, you can tell these were actually made by astronomers for astronomers. So let me show you what I mean. Abracadabra. Let's take a look at just one of these cards. This is M42, or the Orion Nebula. This is one of my favorite nighttime objects. Here's what Messier drew back in March of 1769 when he first saw it. And here's a photo that I took on my smartphone. But as you can see, there's a lot of information on these cards. Let's take a close-up view. First, you note the colors. There's red, yellow, green, and blue. And those are the seasons. So blue is winter, uh, red is autumn, yellow is summer, and spring is green. Now let's zoom in. If you're enjoying this video, please go ahead and push that like and subscribe button. The more we have, the more videos I can bring you, and the sooner. This is the card for the Orion Nebula. Let's talk about all the information that is packed on this front and back. First, we have the Messier number, M42, followed by NGC 1976. Now, the Messier catalog is not the only catalog. There are several others, but NGC stands for the New General Catalog. And the Orion Nebula is item number 1976 in that catalog. So what it says is that M42 is the same as NGC 1976. Over here, we have the official name, Orion Nebula, and it says that it is an emission and reflection nebula. And this is a blue card, and it says winter. This is one that you see mostly in winter. We'll have more specific information on the other side. Over on the left is something that's super important, and this is how to find it. It shows the constellation Orion the Hunter, and it has a couple of highlighted stars. You have Betelgeuse, Alnatak, and Rigel. And you can see where the Telrad circles are. There's a series of red concentric circles. That's what you see when you look through a Telrad viewfinder. These are pretty darn cool. And if you don't have one of these, you should try putting one of these on your telescope. I'll put a link down in the description box. But when you look through that, you see these concentric red circles. And this shows you a 
relative size for what you'll see. Uh, a lot of people would call this star hopping. You can use the target size itself to find the Orion Nebula. It's between Alnatec and Rigel. Down here is a simulation of what you might see through the eyepiece. And of course, over here is a beautiful color photograph. Uh, these are typically from NASA or ESA or even private individuals. Uh, this probably involved hours and hours of uh, stacking and data accumulation to make these beautiful photographs. But let's switch over to the other side. There's still lots of good stuff to come. Again, we have M42 and NGC 1976. Let's go down this list. We have the apparent magnitude, it's four. I'm glad they don't put the absolute magnitude. That just confuses the situation. Apparent magnitude is how bright it looks from the Earth. And since we're on Earth, that's really what matters, right? The distance from us is 1,350 light years away. Uh, it says the apparent size in the sky. It's right here. It's uh, 65 by 60 arc minutes. And for reference, the full moon is roughly, I think, 30 arc minutes or about half a degree. For age, it says 2 million years. And the number of stars involved is thousands. Of course, this is a nebula, and that makes sense. The difficulty level, it goes from 1 to 5. Uh, this one is a 1 because, frankly, the Orion Nebula is one of the easiest to see. That's really one of the reasons why I love it. It's easy to see even from the city. The best months to observe, December through February, you can actually see it slightly earlier and slightly later. It just depends on how uh, late you want to stay up. Uh, down below that is the recommended equipment. This says you can see it with binoculars, a small telescope, and larger telescopes. If you see the Dobsonian, that means you're going to want to use a telescope over six inches. But in this case, you can see it with all three of these pieces of equipment. Again, the Orion Nebula is pretty darn cool, and you can see it from the city. The eyepiece magnification here, it says it recommends low to medium. The Orion Nebula is a fairly large object. It's pretty darn cool. And of course, we get into kind of the nitty gritty of amateur astronomy. It has recommended filters. It says use a nebula filter. You can either use an O3, a UHC, or an H beta. Those will bring out the more interesting details, especially if you're in a very dark sky. And the, it says the appearance here is a bright, colorful nebula with intricate details. Again, those come out really well in a dark sky. Up here, there's more specific information for finding it. First of all, it's in the constellation Orion. And over here, we have the coordinates. We have the right ascension and declination. If your telescope happens to be on an equatorial mount, that'll make a lot of sense. And this will take you right to it if you dial that in. Down here, we have the description box. And there's a ton of really cool information in here. It tells you information about exactly what the object is. The discovery section will tell you when it was discovered. And it also tells you when Charles Messier added it to the catalog. In this case, he officially added it to the catalog in 1774. And down here, there are some interesting facts about it. Uh, well, the first one is kind of cool. It says that the Orion Nebula was the first deep sky object that was photographed. And that was way back in 1880. So as you can see, there's a ton of information on each card. Now, right now, this box set runs about $40 on Amazon. Now, if you consider that the entire thing is a information-packed reference, well, I think that's actually a pretty fair price. In fact, please consider using the Amazon affiliate link that I have down in the description box. Every penny helps. So these are partially meant to get young people excited about astronomy, but I think that they're actually great for grown-ups, too. Uh, I really like that these cards show the Telrad circles on them. That's going to come in real handy when I try my hand at the Messier Marathon in the spring. Now, if you're new to telescopes, check out these videos over here. Thanks for watching and clear skies.